Today on Let's Talk Drinks, I'm going to make three cocktails by the man who created the renaissance of cocktails in the 1990s, Dale DeGroff. Hey guys, so there's a fellow by the name of Dale DeGroff. He's King Cocktail himself. If you haven't heard of him, he's pretty much the guy that single-handedly recreated the, the new renaissance of cocktails uh, back in America, in New York City at the time. Uh, he's the man that started using fresh fruits and really started challenging the way that uh, cocktails were made in the US, which had just spread out throughout the world. If you don't have his book, The Craft of the Cocktail, you definitely have to go out and get it. They've just done a brand new edition uh, available, probably Amazon and stuff like that. So definitely go out and check it out. It's one of the first cocktail books that I bought when I first started. And the first cocktail that I'm going to make for you is the Añejo Highball. This is actually part of the Legend series in our first cocktail menu here at the 18th Amendment Bar. And the first ingredient that it calls for is 30 mils of an Añejo rum. I'm gonna use the Havana Club Especial Añejo. Next up, it calls for 20 mils of a triple sec, or Cointreau. Then five mils of freshly squeezed lime juice. And a couple dashes of Angostura bitters. Add some ice. Give it a good shake. Okay. I'm going to strain that into a highball glass. And just topped off with some ginger beer. Give that a little bit of a stir just to bring that, all those other ingredients up. For my garnish, I'm going to just use a simple orange wedge, and that's the Añejo Highball. So this cocktail was made probably late uh, 1990s by Dale at the Rainbow Room uh, in New York City, and it was a tribute to the Cuban bartenders of the early 1900s. And I've tried this a million times, so I'm going to give it another go. Yeah, delicious. Super refreshing, tasty. I can definitely taste the, uh, the rum there, the triple sec. I was surprised by only five mils of lime juice, but it actually balances out really well. You probably don't need any more than that and the ginger beer just gives that really nice warming spice. It's a great drink. Cocktail number two is the Cosmopolitan. Although it's not entirely created by Dale de Groff, uh, there are stories, and I'm not sure exactly which one's right, uh, that it could have been Cheryl Cook in Miami. Uh, another story, that, which I've read his book, Cosmopolitan by Toby Cicchini. He could have been the man that also created it. I know the main thing is Dale de Groff was the man who actually made it super popular around the world. I think it all stemmed when he first served it to Madonna at the Rainbow Room. As you all guys know, that Sex in the City just took it to the stratosphere. This is a cocktail that how many years later, you know, we're talking 90s back then and we're still serving them and getting asked for them uh, at all of my bars. So the ingredient that he first called for was 45 mils of uh, a citron vodka. I think he used Absolute at the time. We don't have it here at the 18th Amendment, so I wanted to do a little bit of a twist, a little Aussie twist. I'm going to use the triple six vodka, which is made here in Tasmania in Australia, and it's a lemon myrtle and honey vodka, and I think it's gonna work really well. But for all of you other viewers, especially the ones in the States and uh, England and, and everywhere else, just uh, use a citro, uh, like a citron flavored or a, a lemon flavored vodka. Next up, we're gonna go for 15 mils of Cointreau. Then 15 mils of fresh lime juice. 
Remember, fresh is really important. That was one of the things that Dale did when he started uh, bartending was getting people to use fresh juices. Especially in America, a lot of times they were using you know, the pre-packaged juices and stuff like that. Fresh is always best. And last but not least, 30 mils of cranberry juice to give it that really nice sort of pink color. Give it another good shake. We're going to double strain that into a martini glass that's been chilled down. And last but not least was the garnish, which also uh, made it very, very popular, was the flamed orange zest that Dale did. I think he did it for Madonna. Dale, I noticed you added me the other day on Instagram. It's been a long time since I've seen you. Uh, thank you. Comment below if I'm wrong. Uh, now, I'm going to show you two ways to do a flamed orange zest. The way that I did it, which was the wrong way, uh, and the way that Day, uh, Dale showed me when uh, I spent a bit of time with him in cognac for the Giovine Gin Connoisseur Global Final a few years ago. So normally what I do is I will heat up the orange zest just to get it nice and warm, holding the lighter on there and then squeeze create that beautiful little flame. Now in cognac, Dale did a few flame orange zests and he said to me, don't heat it up because it sort of ruins the surprise. He said, get your orange zest, get your lighter and just do it straight away, okay? He's the man, he's the one that got it uh, famous. So let's just do it Dale's way. We'll drop it in there as a garnish and that's the Cosmopolitan. I'm gonna give it another try. Once again, you know, it's uh, fruity. It's got that beautiful color that the ladies and the gents like. It's just a, it's a contemporary classic, isn't it? It's just like a modern classic cocktail nowadays. It's a very well-balanced cocktail. It's not something that a lot of people are putting on menus anymore. However, for you uh, up and coming bartenders or home bartenders, it really is a cocktail that you need to know because it's so popular. And it's something that if I was to do another bar with only classic cocktails, this would definitely be on the list. Okay, so my third and final Dale de Groff cocktail is Dale's Ultimate Mango Rita. Uh, I was lucky enough to try this uh, in cognac, as I said back, I think it was 2014. Um, and Dale was one of the judges with Gaz Regan and Philip Duff. Uh, amazing time, my first ever international uh, cocktail competition final that I made and uh, I'll never forget it. And this is one I can remember, we were down by the pool, we were having a pool party and Dal was making these. So the first thing that he calls for is two slices of fresh mango. So please bear with me, it could take a while. Half of it's ending up in the ice well. Remember, fresh is always best. Don't get the tin stuff. Oh, some's even, oh, look at that. I'm making more of a mess. Ever. All right. All right. Get rid of these into the bin. And we're going to muddle that up. So yeah, don't use the, the tinned mango or anything like that. It's really important to use fresh. That's what I found with this cocktail. Uh, and I haven't tried it since then, but I, I remembered it straight away. That those fresh ingredients are what makes the cocktail really, really good. Then we're gonna go 40 mils, which is like an ounce and a third of calls for a Blanco tequila. I'm going to use a Reposado and 15 mils or half an ounce of Cointreau or a triple sec. As you can see, uh, Dale loves his triple sec a lot like me. 15 mils of a fresh lime juice, half an ounce 
and that's actually 20 mils. I had a mistake there. I'm going to edit that out. All right, we're going to give it a really good shake. So we're going to fine strain that into a cocktail glass. Now it calls for two slices of mango. I feel as though maybe two big slices like I did is probably a little bit too much. full the shaker of pulp. A little bit of a trick is always get a bar spoon. Just give it a little bit of a swell like that. Making a bit of a mess here. Okay. And for his garnish it was a lime wheel just on the side. That is Dale's ultimate mango reader. I'm going to give it another try. Yeah. What can I say? Um, one of the things that I like about this is, number one, I love mango. Number two, I love tequila and margaritas. But the fact that somebody that, for me, uh, he's one of those people that inspired me as a bartender when I first started. Uh, the fact that he's, just, he's done a mango margarita, I think he's awesome uh, because a lot of bartenders get a little bit pretentious about, oh, we're not doing strawberry daiquiris and mango margaritas and so forth. Well, guess what? Dale DeGroff, the king of cocktails, does a freaking mango margarita. Don't be so pretentious, a lot of you bartenders. Embrace it, it's a beautiful drink. And uh, guys, please like, subscribe. Hi, Dale, if you're watching, and we'll see you again soon on Let's Talk Drinks.